Okay. Uh, welcome everyone to Getting to Know on Q, which is part of our remote TD week. Uh, my name is Sandra Murray and I'm the program coordinator here for the Center for Teaching and Learning. Um, I, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to read the something that came up in the chat. Um, I just would like to begin with a land acknowledgement today and uh, to acknowledge that we are on the lands of the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe uh, peoples, um, unceded land as well. And so whenever, uh, I know we're all in different places, I'm here in Kingston and I am on their lands. Um, and I just wanted to, I like to reflect on the land itself before we begin. And so one of the, my favorite things of the day is to take my dog out for a walk and to walk in the fields and to, um, just be with the trees and the grass and it's just absolutely um, inspiring and beautiful when I think of all the time I sit at my laptop. It just helps me so much ground myself and realize what's important, especially in today's world. So the land uh, brings to me a lot of peace and um, beauty. So with that, I will pass this over to Selena and um, thank you for being here today. And just a reminder, the session is being recorded, so please keep your videos off and your microphones muted. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandra. Um, my name is Selena Edlas. I'm the Educational Technologist at the Centre for Teaching and Learning. Um, among uh, my responsibilities is uh, on cue, uh, assisting faculty, uh, staff, grad students um, with their use of OnQ. So today I'm going to be looking at OnQ very much from a TA perspective um, and how you can help your instructor um, with their course. Um, so I'm going to turn my camera off while I do um, the demonstration. Um, so I'm just going to switch that off now. So most of you will have used OnQ as a student at Queen's. Um, so you know how to um, upload an assignment or post to a discussion forum. But obviously when you're a TA, you're going to have a very different perspective on, on, on Q. And so today I'm just gonna go through some essential things that will help you and help your instructor as you go about um, you know, uh, assisting. So the first thing I want to talk about are roles um, in OnQ, because depending on the role that has been assigned to you will depend, uh, will uh, allow you to do certain things in OnQ. So what you can always do within a course is go to the communications tab and go to the class list and see what role you've been assigned. There are a variety of TA roles. Um, so you can see here, I put my kind of uh, student role into um, a TA position. And you can see I've got grader and in brackets, I've got TA dash super or a dash S, which stands for super. So um, if I go and look at the roles in here by changing the enrollment, um, you can see we've got a variety of grader roles. So we've got grader, super grader. We also have um, grader developer, super grader developer. These are probably the main roles that you're going to be put in. The difference between the grader and the super grader um, is to do with sections. So if you have an instructor who only wants you to be working in one or two sections, they're going to put you in a grader role. If they want you to see all sections, you're going to be in a super grader role. So for example, if you're in a course and you're, you, you realize, oh, I can only see one section, that means you're in a grader role and you need to ask the instructor of the course to up your role within the course. The same thing goes for things like um, if the instructor wants you to add content um, to the course or make announcements, you may need to have the super grader 
developer role. So um, if you're not able to do what you need to do, it may be down to your permission. So that's going to be the first place to look. Obviously, a grader role is just going to allow you to grade within the course. Um, so uh, there's a few things I want to point out to you. Um, obviously, the announcement tool. And again, this is role specific. So if you have the correct role, you'll be able to post announcements. Some instructors may want to be the only person that posts uh, announcements. Um, and again, it's very simple to follow through. You can create an announcement, you give it a headline, you add the content you want to add, and you can add a start date. So if, for example, if, if you wanted to post an announcement that uh, students couldn't read till Monday, you could set a date and time on the release of it. You can also remove the announcement based on a date. Also on the course homepage, um, you can see uh, in this course there's a link to the team. So this would be the team, uh, so the Office 365 team for this course. Now some instructors will be using Teams and others won't. Um, if if they are, it's it's a good idea if they put the, the link to the team in their on-queue course, it's easy to find. We also have some widgets. We have the teaching team widget. Now, as a uh, as a teaching assistant, I could go in and I could edit this widget so that I could add my details. Or the instructor may do that. Um, the, so that's pretty much the um, the course homepage, um, the calendar, as you know, probably from being a student, if there are due dates um, on any activity on OnCue, it's going to appear in the calendar for students. If you want to actually create an event that isn't attached to an activity, and when I'm talking about activities, I'm talking about things like assignment folders, discussion forums, um, but sometimes there may be events that um, are not connected to something in on queue. Um, so you, you can create an event as well by going to the calendar tool and just creating an event directly in the calendar. So that pretty much covers the uh, course homepage. Um, next, we are going to go to communications. Um, so communications is where you can see everyone in the class. Um, now, if you have sections or groups in the course, um, you can also view by section and group or groups. And this can work in any tool. So in the assignments, in the grade book, um, discussions, um, if there are sections or groups set up in the course, you can view. And why? how's that useful? Well, if you're assigned a particular section to mark, you just want to see those students. You can switch to sections, apply, and then it's going to show you the sections that are available to view. Um, say I was assigned to mark uh, section three and apply. Now, you would only see all sections if you were in that super role, that, that bracket S role, okay? Um, if not, you would only see um, your one section or two sections or however many you've been assigned and directly enrolled in. Again, the same with groups. If I want to view by groups, I can also do that. Now, um, in terms of communicating with your students, if you want to email the students in your tutorial section, for example, um, you can view. And then you could select all your students and then you could email and that way you would only be emailing the students in your tutorial. So obviously if you are in a smaller course and you want to email the whole class list, you can just email class list button and that's going to pull up every student and then you can hit the compose email button. So from here we're going to jump into the content tool 
And as most of you will know from having taken courses that are on queue, um, this is where all your course materials and course activities can be added. Um, so a lot of instructors for this remote delivery have set up their course week by week um, to make it simpler for students to um, follow along. Um, but that's not, uh, you know, there are courses that are not set up in this format. Now, if you are given that role where an instructor wants you to help um, within uh, the content tool, so you would have that developer part in, in, in the role name, so you would be grader developer or a super grader developer if there was multi-sections, you would then be able to add material to the content area. And uh, for most of you, that would involve selecting the, the module you want to add content to, um, and then using the Upload Create button. Under Upload Create, we have a variety of options from uploading files, so uploading Word, PDF documents, Excel files. Um, there's a whole variety of file formats that OnCue will accept. Um, it doesn't uh, accept pages, so just as a note, we don't want students submitting using pages files or, um, you know, obviously uploading them. Um, we can add video or audio, so we can add video. So this would be adding video from, say, like YouTube. You can literally copy the URL of the video and paste it in, and it's going to preview the video and add it. You can also create a file. So this would be create an HTML file. So rather than uploading a document, this would be creating a uh, text file within OnCue. So again, you would just put the name and then the uh, content here. We also have the option to um, create a link. So, for example, if we want to link, uh, give them a link to a website rather than having a page with the link on, we can just embed the link directly in the table of contents. Whenever you add something and you're given this option to open as an external resource, you always want to check it. Um, this basically means it's going to open that document or whatever it is you, you're adding in a new page, in a new tab in your browser. Talking um, about browsers, one of the things I should mention right now is that the recommended browser for OnCue is Google Chrome. Um, sometimes when we see issues that students are having, um, it's because they're using a different browser. So the first thing to always ask if, if a student contacts you and they're having difficulties is, are you using Google Chrome? You can see that as well as modules, you can create sub modules within a, uh, in the content area. So at the bottom of the content, there's add a module. Literally, you just give it a name. Um, press enter. And within any module, you can create a sub module. And just by clicking clicking enter. You can you can move modules very easily as well. So you can uh, wherever you see these dots, um, if you hover over, you'll get that cross arrow and you can just move up or down the module. So you can see where the line appears. That's going to put this module between those two things. If I go on top and it goes blue, it's going to drop it in. Um, and obviously, if I want to work within that sub module, I can click on it on the left hand side menu. And again, now I'm actually in that sub module. And if I wanted to, I could create a sub module within that. Now we try not to embed too deeply into too many sub modules. Um, you know, I would say three would be the very max. Again, it's very easy to search the table of contents as well. If you can't find something, you can search in the search bar up here. 
And the other thing that instructors will do is that they can add um, existing activities. So existing activities are assignment folders, they're discussions, they're the quiz quizzes, and they've already been created in on queue. And now we just want to add them into the content so the students can find them easily. We can add them in here. So if you see a course that maybe they haven't added these type of assessment activities into the table of contents, that's something that you could maybe recommend um, and help an instructor with because it really makes it a lot easier for students is if everything is located in one place so that when they go to week one there's their content the readings any links they need any videos powerpoints etc and or any um, assessment activities that they have to do So moving on from the content tool we're going to start looking um, we're going to look at uh, uh, assignments, discussion forums and quizzes and how you get to the grading part of them. So let's start with assessments. So I have created a couple of assignments here, assignment one and assignment two. And the first thing I want to point out to you are, are, you know, are the icons that are located next to them, because these icons are telling me something about these two different assignments. So with assignment one, the first one, and if I hover over it, tells me it's a group assignment. OK, so this means students are going to submit as a group. So one person is going to submit. And what this means is that as an instructor or TA, I can go and mark the group. I can go in and the one student who submitted, I can mark their assignment and provide feedback. And when that is published and released, it's going to go to all the students in the group. So it means that for a group assignment and if there's five students in that group I'm going to go in I'm going to mark one student but actually I'm going to be marking five at the same time so it's very time effective um, the second icon is telling me that there is um, a grade item attached to this assignment and then we can see new submissions so these are submissions that have not been looked at completed, evaluated, feedback published, OK? The next assignment, well, I can just see that grade item. And so I know that this is an individual assignment. So as a as a grader, I'm going to come in and I want to mark this assignment one. I'm going to come to the assignment tool. So assessments, assignments. And I'm going to select that down arrow and go to view submissions. And I can see that someone from group two, two has submitted. And there's the document. So what I want to do, I don't want to hit on the document because I want to open up the grading window within on queue. So I'm going to hit evaluate. So on the right hand side is um, a lot of information about um, this assignment, the group that it belongs right. to. I can take a look at all the group members so I can see who is in that group. I can edit assignment. I can see what it looks like to students. And then I get down to the evaluation window. So if there was a rubric attached, I would see the rubric here and I would be able to click on it and mark the rubric. Um, there's a score here. So this is to mark out of 100. And it's attached to the grade item called assignment one. And the note here, this grade will be applied to all members of this group. So I know that when I mark this submission for group two, 
this mark is going to go to everyone, including the feedback. So I'm now going to open my document. And it's going to open in the annotations tool. So now I can use the annotation tool to grade the assignment. And so there are various different options like text highlighter. So I could highlight text. I can, um, uh, what else can I do? I can, I can put a note um, on something so I can, you know, write a comment. Um, there's a whole load of options within this tool. Um, so, and it's going to save a copy of it. So it's not marking up the original document. The original document is still there, and this is another copy of it. When I'm ready to grade, I can add my grade. I uh, add my grade, and the most important thing is that you never want to publish the grades. So as a TA, it's, it's not your responsibility to publish the grades. Um, instructors should be the ones that release the grades to students, or they select a head TA and, you know, give them the go ahead to release the grades. What we don't want is people publishing as they go along um, because um, once grades start getting out, students start asking instructors and emailing instructors saying they haven't received their grade. So it's always better that the whole, um, uh, you know, the whole assignment, the whole grade item is released in one go once everyone has been marked. So as a TA, you always want to select this option. You want to save as draft. And obviously, you can put some text feedback in the box here as well. So I'm just going to save as draft. Selena, can I interrupt yeah. for a second? We yeah. just have a couple questions about sure. the annotations. So yeah. will students see the markup of the assignment? Absolutely, yes. So once the it's released, they'll have a link to the feedback and they'll see the markup, yeah. OK, and if there were two greater reviewers, would the annotations show in the same file or would there be two separate files? Oh, that's a really good. Do you know what? That's a really good question. I'm not sure I, 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 I've never generally known two people to grade the same assignment. So um, I, I'm going to well, we can try it out. I think that's the best bet. I think that's a really good question. I mean, it, I wouldn't recommend two people going in and trying to mark the same assignment. Um, but let me uh, let me just put one of these test students. I'm going to just switch them over to a, a TA. Oh, actually, I can I can impersonate my other TA role. That's fine. So let's just go in. So I I have marked that assignment up and I'm going to go to assignments. And I'm going to go to assignment one. And I'm going to click on draft saved. So let's see what happens. Yeah, it's there. Okay, so Susan also was asking that she received an assignment back last year and it had comments along the side. It looked like the writing was narrower. There were highlighted parts with writing in the margin to explain. Do you know how that was done? Oh, so that would have been done using Word. Okay. Yeah, so that sounds like they downloaded. So another way of marking is that you can download uh, the, all the files, all the submissions as a zip file, and then you can mark them on your desk top if, if they've, uh, you know, if they've created their assignments in Word, you can mark them on your desktop and you can do track changes and that will put those, um, that you know the commenting down the side and then what you can do as long as you keep the file structure the same so you literally just go in you extract the zip file you go in 
Um, let me just show you. I think that's just easier. Um, so the way the way that's done, I'm going to show you on the individual assignment, not the group one. Um, so back to submissions. Thank you. So what you do um, is if you wanted. So you can see I'm just a grader here, so it's it's not actually. Um, here we go. So what you can do is you go in to the submissions, right? And you would have a whole load of submissions. You would select them all. And you select download. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a zip file. And I'm just going to save it on my desktop and I'm going to keep the name the same. It's all got to stay the same. That's the important thing to remember. So once that's downloaded, I'm going to open the folder. There it is, right? And I'm going to just extract it, right? So that I can work on it. So now, um, come on. Oh, sorry, I need to get back to the fol the folder level. So I want to extract all. OK, extract. OK. So the extracted folder should be here somewhere. If I just find it, assignment. Here it is. OK, so here's the folder. Now, the important thing is, is I need to keep it in the same format. So now I want to go in and mark this student. I'm just going to open it. It's a Word document. And what you can do is if you put under review, um, show markup. Um, So we've got everything, comments, balloons, everything. Um, then you can go in, you can start doing your editing um, and marking and save it. Don't change the name of it. You, you save it back. Um, let me just make one change to this. Oh, it's not giving me the menu. Come on. Anyway, you have to edit it, basically. I haven't got it in the edit mode for some reason. I don't know why. Um, so once you save it anyway, um, you save it back to the folder. When you've marked them all, you re-zip up that folder. So you go back and you send it to zip, um, which should be here somewhere. Um, add to zip, where are you? Send to, there it is. You create the compressed folder again, okay? So now you've got the new one, which is here. It's got two in the brackets. You then go back to on queue and you go add feedback files. And you upload and you find the one with the, the assignment to zip with the bracket. Uh, this one, there it is. Open and you add it. And you can see it's, it's going to overwrite duplicate files. And so what happens is it's now going to add that file. So once you've got the Word file marked up with track changes on it, it then um, puts it in as a feedback file. So if I go to this student now and I click on evaluate and scroll down there, you can see it's added the feedback file in. 
So that would be the way to do it. So some instructors might want to do it like that. It's a nice way of marking, um, you know, particularly if you've got a lot of files. But the tips with that is make sure students um, submit as Word documents so that you can just take them straight into Word. You need to put on track changes um, so that it does the commenting down the side. Um, sorry, I just didn't have time then to nose around and, and and put it on but basically it's track changes and um it will put all that text down the side and commenting and then you uh, zip it up and upload them back in all in one go save as draft selena it's carolyn here hello um your little black bubble that you've got on the side there where uh your team's video is can you just um on the top can you uh, minimize that for us Oh yeah, that perfect. No, no. We've got a few, <laughs> we've got a few more questions that have come into the chat. So okay. there's a question about if if one accidentally publishes a grade, is there a way to undo it? Yes, you you can undo it, but it may be the instructor that has to undo it because I'm looking here in so I am in an actual TA role here. And I'm not seeing a retract feedback. Um, oh, hang on a second. Let me publish it. Sorry, that's why I'm not seeing it because I haven't published it. So hang on, I'm just going to publish it in my TA role and see if it allows me to retract it. So there it's published, right? So yeah, no. So. I think that maybe there you can do it on an individual basis as a TA. So you can retract the individual assignment by going back in. OK, but if, for example, you published everything, if actually the way on Q works is depending on the permission, if you have the permission to do something, you have the permission to undo it. So if you have the permission to publish one assignment, you should have the ability to retract it. Um, but I am seeing here that you can publish all. So but it doesn't seem like you can retract all here, whereas I know as an instructor you can. So what happens when you publish feedback? So with the assignment tool, a couple of things happen. As a student, so I'm going to go in and show you my student mode. I'm going to go in as a student. I think this is the one that submitted an assignment. As a student, I'm going to receive feedback. OK, so here's my feedback now because we published that assignment. I can go in and see my feedback. And there's the attached feedback file, so that would be the file that has the annotations in it. Um, and it releases a grade. I didn't actually grade this assignment, so there's no grade there, but normally you would see the grade as well. So it not it releases the grade and the feedback in the assignment tool. But also, if we go to the grade book, it also is going to um, release the grade in the grade book. Now, I didn't put a grade in, and so it's not there. Um, but it would it would show in the grade book as well, because once you hit that publish, it sends it not only releases the grade in that tool, but it sends it to the grade book and releases it. Now, the only way to stop that happening um, is to hide the grade items. So um, if we go to the grade book, we can hide individual um, grade items by selecting hide from user. Um, and you, you know it's hidden because it will have the eye cross through. Um, and you can hide the grades in the individual tool. And again, um, hide from users. Okay, 
So now we can see um, it's going to, that's actually hiding the whole assignment, which is not what we want to do. Um, we want to hide the grade item. And so in that, we have to go in and edit the grade item, go to restrictions. Uh, oh no, sorry, it's in the bottom tab now, sorry. Properties, and we go down to the bottom. So you can see um, the student view preview is set to show them the grade, a percentage grade. If I edit display settings, I can override that display option and I can remove all those options. And so now the student view preview is nothing. And so they're not going to see it. So sometimes the instructor will have everything hidden and then they'll want the grades released. Sometimes they want them published so that they can then go and look at the statistics in the grade book um, before releasing them. So they can look at the mean um, grade and, and, and et cetera. So um, that's going to be your process for marking assignments. So group assignments, individual are going to be just the same. You're going to go to view submissions, but rather than seeing it by group, you're going to see it by student and again, um, click on the evaluate. Now, sometimes you want to see who hasn't submitted. So the thing to know with OnCue that this default view when you go to assignments is to show um, students that have submitted. OK, so if you want to show. Everyone. So that's everyone who has submitted and who hasn't, you need to switch to submission view. OK, so I've got show everyone. And here we go. So now we get to see it, everyone and you can see all the people who haven't submitted. If you need to mark directly in the grade book, you're going to go to grades. So, you know, there are usually some some grade items that are not attached to any tool within OnCue um, or they don't want them attached. So say we had this uh, grade item here. You can see it's not attached to any tool in OnCue because it has no association. So here it's telling us what this grade item is attached to. And we can roll over it and it'll tell us the actual name of the assignment or the discussion forum. So say, for example, I want to go in and mark week two. I can just click on the black arrow again and go to enter grades. And I can mark. Individual. Now, the thing to remember with this is that, again, as soon as it's saved, it's going to release them unless that grade item is hidden. OK. And again, if I want to add feedback, I can do it over here. There is a way to add private comments. So sometimes in large courses, um, if um, that you know, if you're marking and you want to um, mention something to the instructor about that particular um, grading, you can put it in the private comments. So you could say, you know, could you look at this student's assignment, and you could add some private comments there, OK? That only, only instructors or people with grading roles are going to be able to have access to those private comments. So if I save and close, it's going to give me a warning and I'm going to say continue and now it's going to release those grades. So the enter grades is the complete spreadsheet view of all the grades. Um, where I do most of my work and uh, marking would be in manage grades, where you see them listed. Selena, can we pause and answer? We've got a few questions coming into the chat again. Sure. So the first question I see here is, is it possible um, to just update the marks? Because um, there is an update option instead of kind of retracting them and re reposting them. Absolutely, yes. If you uh, made an error and you just wanted to retract, uh, you know, edit them to up. Yes, you could go in and update. And then 
Is there a difference between um, when we say publishing the grades and releasing the grades? Oh, uh, to me, it's the same thing. Sorry if I'm using both words. I, I, yeah, the, to me, they're, you know, letting students see the grades. Okay, so there is a question about, um, is there an on QTA user manual? Um, and I think what I can do is after we've answered a few of the questions, I'll put a link in the chat for the on Q support page. Yeah. Um, that will be kind of your best go to resource for all questions on Q. Yeah, I mean, basically, you can go and look at all the four instructors. Um, information it's all it's all there in terms of the uh, you know the how you do everything it's just again based on your role um if you don't see something that you see mentioned that's because your role is not giving you permission to access it so you either need to have your role upped by your instructor um or you know you you won't have access and then there's one last question that I've that's come in here that I think brings up a really good point. Um, and it's about how TAs will see courses in OnQ versus courses that they are taking as students. Um, yes, yeah. so, yeah, that's a really good question. Yeah. So um, basically, you have two net IDs. You have a student net ID, which is, you know, the one you use to access as a student. And you have an employee net ID. Um, and the way to tell the difference between the two is a student net ID always starts with the number, an employee net ID always starts with the letter. Now, as a TA, um, because sometimes it's hard to get your um, uh, accounts active um, before the start date, of your contract, sometimes we have to add you into courses with your student um, uh, net ID, you know, if the instructor wants your help in setting up the course. But when it comes to teaching or TAing in the course, you must use your employee net ID. So you must make that switch over. So if you are currently using your student net ID, and seeing your courses, um, you must make sure that you switch over to your employee net ID in time for teaching. Um, so if if we know, um, sometimes we can add both even before your um, your net ID, your TA net ID becomes active. So I mean. That's going to be the difference is, you know, you're going to have two different um, on queue accounts. And so you're going to be TAing in one and you'll only have the courses you're TAing in and you're going to have your student one with your regular course load. So um, again, um, with discussions, um, Again, I'm just going into the discussion tool. So we've got a week one discussion here and you can see we've got group or section restrictions on this and it includes an assessment. So when you're marking discussion forums, you need to, or topics, this is a topic, you need to go to the black arrow and you need to do assess topic. Okay, and then you scroll down and you start seeing each student. So I'm gonna click on this first student. So, and I actually, what I did to give you an example was I attached a rubric to this student or all the students in this and just a very basic rubric, which was to um, assess whether they had done their major post and responded to two of their peers in um, the discussion topic. Um, so let me just actually come out of this one. I want to um, find one that actually has something in, and I think it's one of the others. Oops, sorry, my computer's gone really slow all of a sudden. Sorry, it's not letting me go. Come on. S 
Okay. Okay, so we have got four posts in this one. Okay. I just need to find the student. Just one second. OK, so let's see who we have. I'm sure I thought I added the top two, but let's have a look at this one. OK, just one second, please. So I see another questions come into the chat and, and this is a great question. So the question here is if you've been added okay. in with a TAS designation, is it safe to assume that you're registered in the course under your employee net ID? Um, and I would say yes, um, but you would have to double check. Um, your employee net ID should start with a letter, not a number. Um, and you'll be able to know that when you go and log in and you'll see the course in your OnCue page when you've logged in with your employee net ID. OK, sorry about that. Um, sorry, I was looking for the ones that I had actually posted in and because I've used all my test students, I've got lost with the number. But basically, um, you can see with the rubric, um, clicking the rubric, it's going to automatically update the score there. Now, what happens is when students post, you'll see each post listed underneath. So for example, in this uh, discussion forum, they had been asked to make a major post and then re reply to two of their peers' posts. Um, you would see the three things listed one after the other underneath in the uh, assess um, area of this. And then using the rubric, clicking and selecting the, um, the levels that they've achieved. And again, you've got that publish and save as draft. So we would just save as draft and um, it would take us back. So now you can see we've got that draft saved. Okay. So um, again, if we want to, uh, you know, the instructor should publish when they're already. Oh, look, we're seeing, as you can see here, I'm seeing the re retract because I'm in as like a primary instructor role. So I could retract all the feedback if I wanted to. I mean, the thing is that when feedback gets out, it's very hard to make changes to it um, once students have seen their grades. So the thing is not to let it go out in the first place. Um, you know, we have had situations where TAs have accidentally released all the grades. Um, it does happen. Um, unfortunately, there's not a button that we can turn off to make sure that it never happens. So, um, you know, just be aware of that. Obviously, accidents happen and it just makes it very hard for the instructor to then go in and, and look at all the grades, particularly when it's a large course and there's multiple TAs marking, you know, to make sure that they're all kind of on the same track. Um, it it would be very hard to then go in and make any adjustments. So, yeah, try not to let that happen. Um, so that's uh, the discussions and the assignments. Um, again, quizzes, the only time you're going to really be marking quizzes are the, for like um, any quiz questions that are kind of long answer questions um, where uh, the instructor, uh, you know, where, they, where it can't be automatically graded by the system, where it takes someone going in and reading what the student has done. Um, so if I just uh, create a quick quiz here and I add a question, I'm just going to add a new question called um, uh, written response. OK, uh, question here. Um, and I'm just going to say and say it's worth 10 points because obviously they're writing something. 
Um, okay. So I've just created a quick quiz. I can add an assessment to it very quickly by saying let's mark. I can add a grade item. So I'm just going to add that grade item here quickly called quiz. And I know it's out of 10. I'm going to say the weight's 10. So. Now, there are a couple of buttons here that are good to know about. In terms of grading quizzes, allow attempt to be set as graded immediately upon com completion. So most of the time, um, that's fine if it's multiple choice, if it's questions that can be graded by the system. If it's not, then you don't want to do that. Um, if there is a long uh, written response question in there, you don't want that option on or the instructor doesn't want that option on because the students wouldn't have that mark for that question. So say they had 10 multiple choice questions and then they had that written answer question, that would be a quiz worth 20 points. Now, the system could only automatically mark 10 of them. So if you allowed the attempt to be set as graded upon completion, a student would see 10 out of 20 and they might panic. So what you, you want to do is make sure for those kind of questions that they're off. I mean, that's the instructor to make sure their quiz is set up properly. But sometimes it helps if you as a TA see things that don't look, um, you know, quite right. Um, so I'm going to save and close. So what happens when you're um, a student? I'm just going to go in as a student. Let me do this one. And I'm going to impersonate the student. And I'm going to go to quizzes. Oh, and I didn't make it active. So if they can't see the quiz, it's not active. The same with anything. So um, normally when there's a quiz, there's due, there's start dates and end dates and all that stuff. Um, so that wouldn't be an issue. So I'm just going to go in um, as a student. And now I should be able to take that quiz. So I go in, I'm going to do my quiz. I start quiz. And so now I'm going to type in here. So I submit my quiz. OK, submit. So because I had didn't have those that marked attempt as graded, there's no nothing's released except to confirmation that I've submitted my quiz. OK, so now I'm going to go in as a TA or grader and I want to mark the quiz, those long a written response questions in the quiz tool. So I'm going to go to the quiz tool and again, I'm going to go to uh, grade. OK. And now I, because I don't want to look at every question that's in the quiz, I just need to mark that one question. I could go into each individual attempt and go and mark, scroll down each student and find that question. Now, bear in mind that um, instructors like to randomize the order of questions. It won't always be in the same place. And so, you know, it will be it will take longer. The quickest way you can go in and mark one question is to change tabs to questions. And what you want to do is you want to grade individual responses. And what's going to happen, you're going to see a list of the questions. Now, obviously, I just created this quiz with one question in it, so that's all we're seeing. But it would show all 10, uh, say, 11 questions in this quiz. Say we had the 10 multiple choice and then the one written response that's worth 10 points. It will show me all 11 questions. So now I just want to go in and mark my written response question. I can just click on that. I've got great individual responses. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, OK, question one. And what it's going to allow me to do is see every student just that one question. And so now I can go in and start marking each one. It's just showing me one per page and obviously only one student has submitted, but 
you would see every student who has had that question. And even if it's um, a random question, you would see only the people who received that question um, so that you would just be marking them. So you don't have to sort anything. Um, and again, I can click save um, and then move on to the next question or I can put 10 students, 10 of those questions per page. So that's going to be the quickest way that you can mark those questions. Then um, once you've been in and you've marked all those questions, then you could let your instructor know, I've marked my written response questions um, that were allocated to me. And then he would release the grades to the grade book. So I think I'm going to stop there now. We've looked at the three main tools that you're going to be asked to grade in. Um, and uh, as, as TAs, you can um, receive uh, support from uh, the CTL in terms of, you know, finding out how to grade and things like that. Um, Carla, who works alongside me in the CTL, and I run drop-ins on um, Tuesday afternoons and Thursday mornings where you can literally drop, drop in for that quick question. So, you know, if you're given an assignment to mark and you can't remember how, you can drop in and we will show you how to go in and mark that assignment. Um, so the drop-ins are on the CTL website, um, on the on Q support site. So um, Tuesday afternoons, 1.30 to 2.30 and Thursday mornings, 10 till 11. And the links for those Teams meetings are on the website. As Sandra mentioned earlier, we also have the OnQ support site for all the documentation. Uh, documentation. So OnQ dot, uh, sorry, OnQ support dot queensu.ca and I've forgotten <laughs> the website name. Um, where is it? Carla, help me out here. What's our website again? I can't believe I've forgotten it. Here it is. Oh, sorry, I did it the wrong way around. So it's queensu.ca forward slash on queue support. OK, so as a TA, you want to look at the instructor documentation. So if you go down and it's organized the way um, the tools are organized in on queue. So you've got content communication and assessment and then, you know, some of the general stuff like getting started, roles and permissions, that kind of thing. And then we have all the tools that integrate with on queue as well. So it's two o'clock, um, so I think it's um, time. Um, Sandra? Yeah. 